This is Rob uh, from Jam Man. It's with Shredhead. How you doing, man? Yo, yo. I'm really good, man. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We just finished rehearsing. We have the first show since ever with the COVID situation. Finally, shows and everything is getting to life again in Israel. And we have our first show in 17 days. So, uh, we're, yeah. yeah, 17 days. You are wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a year and a half since the last show. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we just finished rehearsing. You can see I'm still in the rehearsing room. I don't know if you can see well. It's a bit dark, but wow, you got a pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are rehearsing in Tel Aviv, so we just finished rehearsal. And now I'm here with you, talking with you, dude. <laughs> well, I guess I'm lucky. Yeah, uh, I guess I'm lucky, dude. It's fucking amazing that yeah. a 10 year old kid have, you know, a, like a channel and the interviews, you know, people from the scene. It's amazing. How yeah. did you get into metal in such a young age? And, um,. Well, my dad is also what I am, what he does, what I do as well. So, oh. okay, so what happened is that he would take me to show sometimes, he would take me to the backstage, and I said, nice. hey, should you ask him this? And then he said, stop being shy, go ask him yourself. And uh -huh. I guess I did, and yeah, I always actually kind of like my mom, I always like something intense, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so I started up this, I'm... Uh, I can't. I'm just an interviewer, you know. I interview mostly rock, metal. I also, I, I'm basically a metalhead guy. I always get metal people, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw you interview the Dino from Fear Factory. Oh yeah, how'd you know Fear Factory? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, that's right. They did. You guys did the crossover, right? You guys did a. The Fear Factory played in Israel around like two or three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so amazing, dude. So I'm here at your service. Give me your best questions. Okay, here we go. Congratulations on your new single, The Nothing We Are. Thank you very much. I have to say, man, the song is brutal. I love that. Yeah. The hard Thank you. to be pumped up, you know? I'm always uh, an intense kind of guy. I wanna, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it just goes... When sometimes it gets me pumped up, and maybe I have to close my door sometimes because yeah. I might get. Yelled at me. But couldn't even yell at me because my yelling is ten times stronger now. Basically, gives me a buff of yelling. I can go like hi. That's my best yell. But when I hear that music, I'm like, Aah! damn. Oh god. God damn. <laughs> uh, if I'm gonna do a, a scream like that, I'm gonna be like sound like uh, for a week, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I play guitar and I don't scream in the microphone. Yeah, you, yeah, you can't scream in the microphone or else everybody's just. No. Nope. I'm scared. <laughs> now tell me about the song, man. It sounds personal. It's almost like you're yelling at someone in it. Yeah, you know. The, this song is about, we recorded this one in the sessions that we did in our last album, like three or four years ago, when we recorded uh, Live and Holy. And this song, I don't know why, but it didn't got into the album, which is a good, like, uh, it's a, was a good idea, like, when thinking about it. Because now we released it as a standalone single, and it's doing very well, and... It's it's a good song, dude. I don't know why we didn't put it into the album, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this one is just you know us trying to tell the world that nobody is fucking special, you know, like yeah, nobody really is. No, you know, like it feels all the time that people try to be a bit special than another person and like. I'm trying to be better than you and special than you. And no, we're just human beings, you know? Yeah. yeah, so 
that's the general idea and you know the the music is just in your face and you know just metal um so was it just a single or do you have more music coming out this year oh we we took uh, the corona downtime to write a new album we wrote an, around 20 songs during this time and in September, we're going to fly to Tew Madsen studio. Tew Madsen did uh, Meshuga and uh, Baby Metal and Suicide Silence and The Hunted and stuff like that. Uh, we did it with him two albums already. And we're going to fly to him in September and record a new album. Um, so th- this last year, you had a be crazy. You had your mm. entire life put on hold. Did you take advantage of this and write a lot of music? Yeah, we wrote 20 songs. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, Yeah, that's why we are going to record them for a new album in three months from now. We're going to fly to Denmark and record a new album. And I hope it will be released this year already. What was going through your mind when all this happened? Sorry again. Uh, what went through your mind when all this happened? Uh, basically, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, it's so random, you know? Like, one day you are waking up and there is a global global epidemic and you are like, what? <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> what is going It's like, kind of like, did we just go into a movie? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, it was like, what you know at, at, like at the beginning it was all over the news in china in wuhan and all that and you're like all right like all right news and then it got to israel where we live and it was like okay it's getting serious now and all of a sudden lockdowns and you can't go out of, from your house for a whole month and we're like what is going on it felt like uh, M. Night Shyamalan movie, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just, it was like, it was just like this, people of 2020. 2020. Just <laughs> yeah. Ow! Uh, it felt more like a truck hitting, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, it felt like five ton truck. <laughs> but this, this, is, this is the 2020 we wanted. Hi! Yeah. I am one of the new years. I am one of the actually first of the new years of the 2020. What we got. <laughs> hey guys, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a global virus. I'm gonna make yeah. <laughs> You like that? <laughs> to the new year! <laughs> yeah, something like that. It, it was just weird, you know, because I, I work in the music industry. And I was, I you know, I was booking all my schedule from March to August, and all of a sudden, psh, nothing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And yeah, it was weird. It was really weird time. Like I, I don't even know what to say, because it was so weird <laughs> and so out of the blue, you know. Yeah. So yeah. But now it's getting better, and I I saw over the news that in the USA as well it's getting better. It must have been scary for a band putting all that time and money into making music, getting it, getting booked on tour, and then just your dreams are gone. Yeah. It's yeah. For especially for like really small, really like small bands or like that we're gonna get. Tours, you know, like small bands that were actually gonna, you know, get a state tour, and then that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it felt horrible because we had a lot of uh, a lot of ideas and stuff that we wanted to do, and we booked a lot of stuff, and we had a lot of ideas of how to get shredded into, you know, the next level and getting into new territories and to do new stuff that we never did. And all of a sudden, a global epidemic happened. <laughs> so yeah, it was a real bummer. So I see you have a big show booked this month. Are you excited to get back on stage? 
Yeah, I, I'm really excited. You know, you know, you have Facebook. You you, you know Facebook. You have. Yeah, yeah I'm my own. Yeah. 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 So you have that uh, Facebook memories thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like, yesterday or two days ago, I got a memory of Shredded first show 12 years ago. And I remember the how I, how much I was excited before the show. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm realizing that I'm, exci- I'm excited pretty much at the same level, like, 12 years ago about this show. So, yeah, I'm really excited. It was a year and a half. Year, um... It's just so great because you're finally, you know, you're finally going to hit your boot back on that, you know, big old thing, big old chain. Yeah. It's going to be really great. Yeah. And it's just going to be a fantastic, you know, when we get back on stage, everybody, I'll be getting back in the meet and greet, taking pictures. Yeah. And an interview with them because the I want to start that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I can't wait for that. It's been long time it's been way too long since we felt like a band you know oh uh, will it be different now playing like the crowds and the rules and stuff I don't know about the rest of the world but in Israel today actually uh, the government just canceled all the covid rules and all the covid uh, restrictions so you Israel is getting back to like to a situation that there is no covid in Israel so in Israel it's gonna be just like old times you know before the covid but uh, in the rest of the world I guess I will have to be there to know <laughs> yeah how's the pandemic going where you are how uh, what the pandemic going where you are uh, now it's really good but But it was bad, really bad a few months ago. Like a few months ago, it felt like it's never gonna end. But uh, fortunately, we got uh, a lot of uh, vaccines, and most of the country is uh, vaccinated right now. So we are just getting into normal life again, which is amazing. <laughs> um. So more and more things are opening up there? Yeah, uh, like from today we don't need masks anymore, nowhere. Like closed places, open spaces, no masks at all. No restriction about uh, how many people can be in the same room, nothing. Like can you get everything the- is normal. Oh, everything. What? Uh, can you get the vaccine? Do you guys have the vaccine over there? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I got the two shots already. The whole band got it already. Um, like, 70, I think, like 70, 75% of the country already got vaccinated with the two, the two shots. So, things are getting back. What is the metal scene like? Oh, the metal scene, the metal scene in Israel is amazing. Because imagine, like, Israel is... that small like how where do you live uh buffalo buffalo, buffalo. all right so buffalo new york in uh united States. yeah so new york like the state new york is bigger than israel <laughs> <laughs> and israel is like if if you want to drive from the northest point to the southest point in israel it's like six hours six hours So it's really small country and there's a lot of bands in a very small you know uh, very small place so we have a lot of shows with we, we have a lot of genres we have a, like an amazing underground scene with a lot of bands and people coming and playing and you know like metal music is not that popular in Israel like in the USA or in Europe because Israel is a bit uh, you know Mediterranean. vibe country and so the metal is a bit underground but I'm very happy that in the last few years we got to get out of the underground scene and be able to play bigger shows in more mainstream venues as like yeah mainstream venues so the scene is amazing we have tons of band a lot of good people and 
it's amazing, good place to grow in. Um, do you guys have moth fish and sage diving and stuff like that? Do you guys have moth fish? Yeah, fish? yeah one, one of the craziest that you will ever see. The, oh. the, is, the Israeli crowd is one of the craziest crowd you will ever play to. If, if I was a metal thing, I would always run in the moth pits. Oh my God, I can't yeah. imagine. I would just keep, keep punching Buddy in the head, no matter what happened. Just everywhere <laughs> I could possibly go, just <laughs> going all out. <laughs> yeah, dude, you can see that my teeth here is a bit like crooked. I was at the Lamb of God show like uh, 12 years ago and someone just <laughs> into my face. Oh, and it's like, oh, God. Someone, yeah. What, what happened to that guy? I wonder. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know, dude. <laughs> it was Lamb of God used to do Black Label Live and each show they did like a huge wall of death. And it was like two or 3,000 people show here in Israel in Tel Aviv. And the whole venue just opened up and I was in the first row and like someone bumped me with his hand and my tooth is crooked now so yeah I, I used to really love the mosh pits but now I'm too old to do that because my back will hurt <laughs> oh god <laughs> that was the good old days back man <laughs> I kept punching body in the mouth <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> You see, I love talking with fans from all over the world to learn what their music scene is like there and how shows go and things like that. I think it's awesome to find all the stuff out because sometimes you're actually more traditional music or more like yeah. pizza or they're more, they're more uh, pop, they're more rap even. But I I love that. They're like, they're kind of, I guess you can say a rebel there in the country because they're like metal. Rebels, <laughs> the metal rebels. That's actually a good thing. Yeah, it sounds like a like a single from a upcoming band, you know. Yeah, the bad, the metal rebels. <laughs> metal rebels. <laughs> what is the traditional music like over there? In Israel, we have uh, like the mainstream music. Uh, we call it in Hebrew. Uh, Mizrahit. It's like uh, Eastern music, like translated to English, but not Eastern music, you know, as the way you think of. It's just like very happy music for dancing and it's very uplifting. And uh, it's very influenced from, you know, all the countries around us, you know, all the Arab countries, because Imagine Israel is here and everything around Israel, here we have the sea and everything around here is uh, Arab countries. And so the Arab music is very influenced Israel in that way. So uh, like traditional music in Israel is very similar to Arab music, but the traditional music in Israel is amazing in my opinion. What got you into metal? Slayer. Slayer. Slayer, Slayer. Okay, sorry, I, sorry, I can hear you. Slayer. Slayer. Yeah, I was, Slayer. Yeah, Slayer. Slayer. Yeah. I was like eight years old and I heard the Angel of Death for the first time ever. And I was like, oh my God, what is that? And how can someone play the guitar so fast? It just made me poop my pants when I saw it. It was so good. Slayer. Uh, my jaw just like, just like, oh my God. Yeah, I, I need to understand what I'm listening to. So, oh. uh, hey, yeah, so I dig up. Yeah, so what? I interviewed Slayer. Really? Yeah, I actually interviewed Oh my, him. amazing. I never got to see them live, unfortunately, before they broke up. But, dude, I love this band so much. I know, I, I used to know how to play on guitar every Slayer song ever. Um, how, how old were you when you saw your first concert and who was it? Um, our first concert was, like I said before, like 12 years ago. So I was who did 70s. You, 
like how old were you when you saw your first concert, like your first ever concert? That you. Oh, uh, when I, I went, when I went to the first concert. Yeah, when you went. Oh, yeah. to the first concert. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I was around uh, fifteen or sixteen, I think. Uh, it was Megadeth show. It was amazing. It was a United Abomination tour, and they got into. Uh, they came to Tel Aviv, so I saw them there. And after that, I started going to local, you know, local shows like the, the local metal scene shows. And uh, from there, I just went to hundreds of shows. <laughs> um, I'm friends with David Olsen, and I also interviewed him. Dave, Dave Elfson. From uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I saw that you interviewed him about like a month or two months ago. Yeah, he seemed really nice. Sad what happened. With that. Yeah, it's a sad situation with him and Megadeth. Right. Um, mine was Alice Cooper and Anvil. I was uh, six months old. Really? Oh, my first two concerts, and then I saw. And then I seen Primus a few days later. I saw a lot of big like metal and rock guys when I was Amazing. only six months old. Amazing. So, you, know, dude. I, you know I was born in the rock, basically. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I don't know your parents, but they raised you in the most amazing way possible. Thank you, really. Thank you, man. Any shows planned for the summer? Uh, we are still waiting up to understand the situation around the world because everything is so fragile right now. Like you can book something and will be canceled in a week, in a month, in a day. So right now we are just uh, focusing on the new album, recording it, making it like the best we can, finish it, and getting ready for the world coming back to life and start releasing the album and start touring again. Uh, are, your board, uh, are your borders opening up so you can fly other countries? Like it, from Israel, you can only fly on a plane because as I said, all the countries around us are uh, hostile Arab countries. So we can't go with cars outside of Israel. Uh, but yeah, the, the borders are open. We can fly anywhere right now. But uh, most of the countries are still understanding their situation about like live music and events and concerts and stuff like that. So it's really hard to tell. What would your dream tour be if you could make the lineup? The dream tour, if I can do, make the lineup, even like uh, bands that don't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, even bands that don't exist. Anybody. Uh, all right. Metallica headlining, because Metallica are my favorite band ever. So Metallica headlining, Pantera. And you know what? Just Pantera and Metallica. Each night, I would go to each stop of the tour each night if this tour will happen. What is your favorite memory from playing a show? My favorite memory from playing a show. I think our first headlining show ever. Like we we grew up in a city with an amazing community for music. We had like a youth club uh, that. Uh, really got kids into playing music and being a band and taught us how to be in a band and how to do events and stuff like that. And I remember our first headlining show, you know, outside of our hometown, you know, in Tel Aviv, the big city. And I remember like, you know, getting on stage and, you know, all the people there came to see us. We are not a support band anymore. We are the headliners. And it's not about being the headliner. It's just about, you know, living a dream you had in mind and suddenly it got real, you know? So I think that that's like a sweet memory I have. What is your worst? 
by Wolf. Oh my god. <laughs> My worst, we played a Nazi club in Germany. You know, Nazi, you know, Nazis. Nazis? Yeah. And we are Jews. Yeah, we didn't we didn't know. We didn't know. Just after we got out of the club, like our bus driver were like, you know, we just played Nazi club. And like, what? And we are Jews from Israel. <laughs> you, know, you could have died actually in that show. They could have tortured me. I it's I know yeah. it's nervous laughter. <laughs> they could have they could have tortured you there. Oh my god. I I don't know that, but I think like The best thing that could happen like the best thing that happened is that we didn't know about the situation and we did a show the show was pretty good actually but you know just the situation it's just like mind-blowing <laughs> but yeah it's, it was it's not the worst memory it's just like a weird memory you know I'm pretty sure that's a horrible memory though they think They really don't like you guys. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know that very well. Yeah, they hate you guys. Oh my god, I'm yeah. so bad. Oh my nah. god. You guys are so yeah. lucky. That could be What? that should be your lucky memories. Yeah, probably our lucky memory, but you know, life dude. That, that, that's what, what I love about touring. You never know what you're gonna get into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the metal industry, you know? That's the metal yeah. industry for you. Yeah. What is next for you? What is what? What is next for you? The new album. We are just focusing on the new album as strong as we can. We have a lot of... great ideas of how to develop the band especially after the, all this weird covid situation and just the new album you know we released an album like a few months before the covid hit so the album is dead pretty much you know we can't just continue from where we stop so a new album that's the big thing for us how do my followers start following how do my followers What? Sorry, you got, you got caught up? Oh, sorry. Um, how did my followers start following you? My followers. Uh, my followers. How do they follow you? How they can follow us? Uh, yeah, like, Facebook? Yeah, they go to their website so they can like uh, check out your website and they can follow you. We have, a, we have a website, we have a Facebook page, we have an Instagram page, we have a TikTok page. You know, all the platforms that you can think of. And they, they can get the music and find about your tour dates there? Yeah, uh, you, we have Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Amazon Music, you know, everything. Do you guys have merch? Yeah. We, we are working right now on an on a internet shop, like online shop. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I think a lot of bands are doing limited, doing mer- like they're doing limited merch. Uh, to go with their singles any plans on doing that to go with their you know like um you know like how you brand new single you can actually make that limited merch you know limited yeah yeah we, we are doing a lot of uh, shirts mainly we have uh, a designer that's working with us for a few years now and Lilo our bass player is a graphic designer as well so they are working together and just creating all the artworks for the band so each single and art that we release we are doing some kind of merge with it if it's a hoodie a shirt a grinder like patches and pins and stuff like that do you guys have merch yeah we have a Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, all good, it's all good. 
Uh, well, I do unboxings on my show if you want to hook a brother up. Would you like to hook a brother up? Would you? Do you want to, do you want to show? Yeah, yes, please. I'm sorry. I need the money, man. Mm -hmm. I need it for the bread, man. That loaf of bread. Do, 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 just send me over, over email your uh, shipping address and your shirt size, and I will hook you up. Thank you, man. Really, have a good day. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Well, thank you for being on my show, man. I hope the next Yeah, time. man, thank you. Thank you for having me, dude. You're awesome, and I hope most kids in your age will be awesome as you. I would love to talk to you at the back of the one of your shows, dude. Okay. Yeah, me too, dude. Bye. Get